Welcome to this session of the Open Season Exchange. My guest is Walton Francis. He's a federal health policy analyst and author of the annual Guide to Health Plans for Federal Employees and Retirees. Walt, thank you so much for being here. Delighted to be here. Great. So today we're talking about open season for the Federal Employees Health Benefits Program. For 2023, there are a lot of changes, new coverage options for existing FEHB plans and some new plans that are added to the overall list too. But typically during open season, a very low percentage of participants in FEHB, as you know, actually make changes to their healthcare enrollments and actually more than 95% do nothing each year. So a lot of that might have to do with inertia. It's easier to do nothing than it is to do something. And that goes for a lot of things, but including federal uh, health benefits. So what would you say to FEHB participants who might feel like it's not even worth checking out the enrollment options that are on the table? I'm saying they're making a terrible mistake. <laughs> Uh, this is not a good season to be a couch potato in the 95% who don't change plans. You want to be in the 5% and hopefully we can raise the 5%. Um, there are a lot of changes in the program this year, but what's less important than this year's particular changes are that there are cumulative changes over time. So that someone who made a very savvy decision 10 or 15 years ago may be in a terrible position now. And what we want are the people who are satisfied where they are to stop and think a little bit about are there some alternatives. And they have so many tools to deal with that. Uh, they, they will watch the plan advertising ad nauseum, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and those plan advertisements are pretty important. They highlight what's good or bad about brand X or brand Y. Uh, OPM has a very good website. The checkbook website is even better. Uh, and both of them are set up to really make it easy to find the plans that are most likely to be useful to you. Uh, so there's no real excuse. You don't have to uh, become a health insurance expert. There are guides, published guides, mm -hmm. uh, best looked at online on your home computer or your office computer uh, that are written in plain English that uh, are understandable. If there's something that matters to you, like next year, like maternity, maybe, you can look at two or three or four or five brochures in a matter of five minutes and search on the word maternity, mm -hmm. and you'll find which ones pay all your maternity costs, which is many, but not all. So it's worth spending a little bit of time because you can save. Our estimate is that more than half of all federal employees or annuitants can save $2,000 a year or more by changing plans. Yeah, that's, I mean, those are big savings. That's, I mean, I've, you know, just heard colloquially that financial experts can, you know, they said that over half of Americans can't cover an $1,000 emergency expense with their savings. So that, you know, $2,000 having, being able to save that could have, mean a lot for some federal employees and retirees. Um, what are So let's talk a little bit specifically about this year, if you can. What are some of the changes in coverage that have stuck out to you for 2023? Um, there are a number of them. They're not, none of them are earth shattering. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, the OPM has pushed the plans to be, to get better on their benefits for, related to fertility. So, and the, the current benefit levels in the FEHB plans mm -hmm. range from terrible to non-existent, okay? <laughs> well, we're now going to have several dozen plans where those benefits get to be not real good. They're not going to pay for the most expensive procedures, but they will pay for a lot of procedures. So that's a big change and important to couples that are struggling to have a child. Um, there are, uh, as usual, some tweakings. Uh, this year, um, uh, it's sort of uh, hot in the news uh, to be a one LGBT whatever, okay, and there are more benefits now for people who need some kind of surgery or, or drugs. Uh, so that's a change, won't affect a huge fraction of federal employees, but, but some. Mm -hmm. um, 
And they're all the little usual improvements plans make every year or little cutbacks they make every year. Um, back to the brochures, in every brochure there is a section called Section 2, How This Plan Changes for Next Year. And on one page in a list in bullets in plain English, how the plan changes. And maybe this plan is adding a really important benefit and that one is not, or vice versa, dropping a benefit and the other is not. That's very easy, quick to, to check. Mm -hmm. Even if you're just checking on the plan you're in, you should check that page. Even if you stay in the same plan or the same plan family, are there different choices or things that you can think about to change your coverage within a specific provider? Yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the things, in fact, that's obvious is how do you know, you may have a, most people have a family doctor or a specialist that they use frequently. Hey, it's worth a phone call to the doctor's office, doctor, and you can speak to the manager. You don't need to speak to the physician. What plan or plans networks will you be in next year? Because you want to know for sure if your doctor is going to stay with the plan you're in or some other plan. Okay, and if someone mentions that then to you on the phone, another brand, if you will, another carrier, mm -hmm. as we like to call them in the industry, uh, you could check out that carrier as well. So that's a, that's a simple piece of homework. Doesn't require looking at a piece of paper. It just requires making a phone call to a number you probably, probably already have in your cell phone. And um, let's talk a little bit more about the, the savings that people can get from changing their plan um, enrollments during open season. So you said, Annually, you can save two thousand dollars, or potentially two thousand, up to two thousand dollars. More or more. Or more. <laughs> um, so beyond just changing your enrollment choices, are there additional ways that you can um, save money on health care through FEHB? Uh, lots of ways. Um, let me just talk about the choices though for a second. Sure. Suppose you're in Blue Cross High Option, okay? Actually called Standard Option, but it's the High Option. That's that was a great, that is still remains the Cadillac of health plans. It's a very good plan, mm -hmm. but its premium is very high. Take a, you can, if you're in the Blue Cross family and you want to use Blue Cross preferred providers, etc., take a look at Blue Cross Basic, okay? And that's, that's going to save, if you make that switch, it's going to save almost anyone a fair amount of money. Uh, then there's another Blue Cross plan. Okay, FEP Blue, which yeah. probably the couch potatoes have never even heard of. All right. So there's a third choice in that family of plans. The GEHA family of plans is now up to five plans. Okay, so there's multiple Aetna plans, multiple United Healthcare plans. There's lots of choices within plan families, and they all, all the ones I've named, give you options that are a lot less expensive than others. Um, the uh, possibilities, though, get really interesting if you're retired and on Medicare, uh, Parts A and B, mm -hmm. or maybe thinking about whether or not to join Part B because you're about to turn 65, which is the last chance you get to join Part B w once you're retired without paying any penalty for late enrollment. You may not know that we're now up to about 20 different plans that pay all or part of your Part B premium. If you have Parts A and B and you're in that particular federal employee health plan, this is kind of, that's like found money, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I had mentioned Blue Cross Basic. They pay up to, I think it's $600 of your uh, Part B premium. But there's others, some of the United plans pay close to $2,000, okay? So there's a lot of ways to get subsidized while staying with the plan family that you're in, or maybe the plan that you're in that you may not have even realized you had. Let's talk a little bit more about these Medicare, Medicare Advantage plans. So can you tell me, so you said that now 20 different uh, providers are offering these. Is this something that you see is growing or, and how many people like, I guess, know about this type of coverage? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, and Medicare Advantage is something very few people, very few federal annuitants know about, okay? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in the Medicare program itself at large, all, of, all 60 million Americans who are in Medicare, we're now up to half of them are not staying with traditional Medicare. 
but are in Medicare Advantage plans. And what are Advantage plans? Well, they're just like FEHB plans. In fact, the Medicare Advantage program was modeled after the FEHB, and Medicare has an open season, and so on and so forth. But here's what's new and different. Uh, it started about three or four years ago, but it's really taken off in a big way last year in this. It's just that most annuitants don't know about it. There are now plans which if you join, you join the FEHB version of the plan, uh, and the plan will then put you, and you want to be in, their Medicare Advantage plan that pays all doctor's bills, all hospital bills, and a better drug benefit than your FEHB plan has. Uh, and they do this while paying your Part B premium or most of it. So instead of having to pay two premiums, you basically pay one premium, okay, and get better benefits than you have now. And it's an open season choice. You don't have to be. Your doctor is probably in the network. These are big network plans like United, Aetna. Uh, or if you're an HMO user, Kaiser mm -hmm. has this kind of benefit. This is a no-brainer for people with Medicare. Uh, to eat, but at least take a look at one of these plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, you know, it's especially important because it's, you know, uh, older Americans typically use healthcare more often and are spending more money, so it makes sense to kind of have that, you know. A absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there's some people who've been forever in some plans like SAMBA, okay, uh, and um, some, other, some other plans that are traditionally valuable choices, but the trouble is their premiums have gotten too high. Some of those plans next year now have, will pay most of your Part B premium. So even if you're a couch potato uh, retiree, you really ought to do a little homework. And other than that, what are some of the other different factors to be thinking about when making a plan uh, choice or change, potentially changing your, your enrollment? Things like you know your age is one of them, but what are some other things that you should be asking yourself when making potential changes to your health care? Well, if you're planning anything very unusually or expecting anything, good or bad, it could be having a baby or it could be, hey, you've just been diagnosed with cancer, whatever serious expensive medical events are in your lives that you can foresee, this is a very important time to consider changing plans or at the very least check that the plan you're in will, will have a provider you want to use or that you're already using. So looking at your own health and your family member's health before you make a plan decision is awfully important. Um, the, the other kind of circumstances are the plan dropped a benefit that you care about. Maybe it's chiropractic, okay? Maybe it's um, physical therapy. Who knows what, you know, maybe it's psychotherapy. The benefit that you depend on may be found in a better version in some other plan or you may be about to benefit, in which case you're lucked out and you're home free, or lose if you stick with the plan you're in. And, uh, you know, those are things that you can kind of plan for, but of course there's always medical things that can happen that you don't plan for. So do you have any recommendations for what FEHB participants can think about to kind of, you know, adjust for those sorts of events that might happen? Sure. What Checkbook does in comparing plans is, is look at the likely medical costs faced by people of your age, family size, prior health condition. We don't know, we, we don't collect your medical history, but mm -hmm. you know, you could tell us or look it up online or in the, in the, in the print guide. Uh, and we show you which plans are likely to do better by you in a year of high expense up to and including, and we actually compare them in terms of the worst that could happen to you, the, the catastrophic, the maximum out-of-pocket cost. And that's got two pieces to it. One is the premium uh, for sure expense. So you may be paying three or four or five thousand dollars a year in premium, okay? Uh, no matter, even if you never see a doctor. Um, and then the out-of-pocket guarantee the plan gives you the most you can pay for medical expenses that in the coming year, that's an annual figure. In most plans, it's somewhere around five or six thousand dollars for one person, or seven thousand, mm -hmm. and other and for family maybe double that. But those those are pretty big differences, and you may yeah. be paying a couple thousand in 
uh, more in premium in Plan X and have a couple thousand higher out-of-pocket maximum benefit. And if something bad happens, if that truck hits you, uh, you will be thousands of dollars more out-of-pocket than you otherwise would have been. So you can compare plans, again, um, our website and OPM web, OPM's website, that's the Office of Personnel Management, which mm -hmm. runs this program, both make it very easy to see uh, what kind of premiums and what kind of out-of-pocket guarantees each plan has. Yeah, and uh, you know another way that you can kind of save up money is through the FSA FEDS program or a health savings account. Is that something that you see a lot of federal employees or retirees participating in? They're not, and they should. And let's, well, flexible spending account is something you have to be an active employee to participate in. And this is the program in which, quite apart from which, what health insurance plan you're in, leave that aside, you can uh, set aside uh, in the vicinity of $1,600, mm -hmm. which you will pay towards medical expenses that you know you're going to have. You know, that expensive drug that you take with a big co-payment, uh, eyeglasses, um, you know, whatever you can reasonably foresee, the deductibles that you're going to have to pay in your health plan, okay? Uh, you can set aside enough money to pay for those things, and basically what's happening is that amount of money is no longer counted as taxable income. Mm -hmm. So you, you have reduced your taxable income, which in, in the real world, let's say you put a, a thousand bucks into a flexible spending account, you are, you're, all your federal local taxes that are subject to taxable income, including your Medicare and Social Security tax, are probably going to be, depending on which state you're in, but in the D.C. metro area, at least 25 or 30 percent or a little more, okay? So if it's a thousand bucks you set aside, you're going to save 300 bucks. That's worth, that's found money. I mean, anyone with a few minutes of work can say, I'd like to have a couple hundred dollars that I didn't sure. otherwise <laughs> expect. Now, you mentioned health savings accounts. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other category. Start with, there's a category of plans called high deductible. And there are about a dozen of these in the FEHB. Again, a, a major part aspect of the program, including national plans as well as any number of local plans. Uh, if you join a plan with a, quote, high deductible, there is something called a health savings account provided you. Usually it's about half the deductible in the FEHB. So the deductible might be $2,000 and the health savings account might be $1,000, which means you could be out of pocket $1,000 before regular health insurance benefits kick in. That's a pretty high deductible. Most people's quick reaction would be, I don't want to have a deductible that high. I'd rather have a $200 mm -hmm. deductible or a whatever. Uh, but what they don't understand, if they haven't explored it a little bit, and the plan brochure, each plan has a brochure that explains it very well, or you can look it up on the OPM website, or you can read the chapter on it in Checkbook's Guide, uh, or just, you know, there's a lot of information out there. You can add to that health savings account voluntary contributions of another couple or three thousand dollars, okay, per person up to two, okay. For grand total for family, it could be up around seventy five hundred dollars next year. Can be tax free. It comes out of your paycheck to be sure, but it lowers your taxable income by using that example. If your tax rate is marginal tax rate. Uh, is around 33%, and you put in 7,500 into your health savings account, you're gonna save $2,500, mm. all right? Suppose you have a good year and you don't spend anywhere near that $2,000 deductible, uh, which by the way, your annual physical does not count against the deductible, so that's free. So maybe there's a doctor visit or two, a couple hundred bucks. At the end of the year, you've got, using that example, $7,500 in a bank account. The next year, you can do the same, and now it's $15,000. And now what gets interesting is that deductible that sounded so high, uh, two, one or $2,000, depending on whether it's self only or family, it's peanuts compared mm -hmm. to what you've got in the savings account. And meanwhile, you can invest the money in the savings account in the stock market or in bonds However, it's your money. It's, in a, it's like having an IRA. Any money you spend out of that account is tax-free coming out. The earnings are tax-free over the years. 
So it's like an IRA on steroids, a, a Roth IRA. It's even better than a Roth IRA. Money goes in tax-free, grows tax-free, comes out tax-free. And I know people who have more than 50000 a year in their health savings account, okay? It's a big way to add to your retirement kitty, okay? Mm -hmm. Or your what if there's some terrible event in my life kitty. Uh, and, and it's relatively inexpensive. Yeah, I like I like that phrase IRA on steroids. Um, is that you know that type of savings? Is that something that all federal employees should be looking at, or is there you know are there people who are more right for if you're high still employed? Plans? Okay, you can join. You know, you could be 60 years old. You're employed, and by the way, if you're over age 55, you could even add an extra thousand dollars into this account, uh, uh, kind of an extra uh, mm -hmm. bonus. But the, uh, so as long as you're still employed, you can have the H health savings account and keep adding to it and it keeps earning money. When you've retired, you can no longer add money to your health savings account. But if by then it's thirty, forty, fifty thousand $50,000 or whatever, it's already reached a major self-sustaining and growing size. So, and you keep it, it's your account, okay? And you can even stay in the same plan and there's still a contribution towards your uh, costs through an, what's called an HRA health reimbursable arrangement. We're getting into the weeds here, and I don't want to. You have to. This is something you have to study. It's been an hour or two or three on, but it's really explained very well uh, in various places. And most federal employees probably don't even know it exists as an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the health premium rates. So I, that's kind of what it, the direction I wanted to go. Um, it's going to be, they're going to go up by an average of 8.7% in 2023. Mm -hmm. For the enrollees share, 6.6% .6 for the government's share, making a 7.2% average increase overall. So that's a lot higher than what we've seen in over a decade. Is that something, you know, a lot of federal employees or retirees might be concerned about seeing that number in front of them. Is that something, or what would be your message to them I, they, to those well, who are concerned. they should be concerned. It should be a little bit of a wake up. Uh, a couple of things about it. First, that's the average increase. All right, but roughly half the plans are above average. So the one you're in may have gone up 10 or 20 percent, and about half of them are below at or below average. And then for you, it's hey, it's just maybe a one or two or four percent increase, and it's not a big worry. Well, without checking, how are the plans? that I'm, the plan I'm in, and any other plans I might be interested in, which ones have premiums that are above average increase or below average increase, and you may find there's some bad news or some good news there. Mm -hmm. So you let that be a kick in the pants. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, one Washington football team game that you don't watch, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the... Um, so the, so the average increase is not a killer because it's no one pay... Uh, some people pay the average, but basically no one has to. You can pay more or less, and it right. makes sense to pay attention. Uh, we have found there are a lot of plans, and among them plans that were very good to begin with, that have gone up less than the average. So there's some fantastic buys in this program. What are, can you name a couple that are going up less than the average? I can. Okay, <laughs> I got a peek at my, uh, you know, they're yeah. about... Uh, there are over 30 health plans available in the D.C. metro area, and almost every metro area in the country has at least 20 plans, usually 12, 25 or so. Okay, so, and I don't keep uh, uh, yet. I have, of course. We're early in open <laughs> season, so I haven't yet memorized all this, but just glancing at this happens to be for self-only enrollments, employees age 55 to 64, because age matters in all this in terms of your likely health care expenses. But um, uh, the Kaiser Prosper plan, available in D.C. metro area, and, and a similar plan in other parts of the country, the uh, published premium for that plan, assuming you have no costs and taking into account and the tax savings, okay, that you can get, we're talking, I'm going to just call it a thousand bucks, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not... It's not up very much. It's not very much to begin with. Uh, other plans in a similar category, the, the Kaiser Standard Plan, um, the United 
Choice Plus Advanced, the Care First Blue Plan. I mean, there are lots of yeah. good buys. GEHA, that's G-E-H-A, their high deductible plans, very good buy. Um, NALC, consumer driven, remains a very good buy. Or in service, if you're eligible, okay? And the Blue Cross uh, FEP Blue Focus plan is by the best, it didn't go up much. So there's lots of, but I, I hate to mention, everyone I just mentioned, for everyone I mentioned, there's another one just as good. I mean, there's a lot of inexpensive, good plans catering to every taste or every medical need, if you will, uh, in this program. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of plans available. I think the number this year is 271 plans overall. Not everything <laughs> is available to everyone, but there's no. a ton of options out there. And, you know, just seeing that number on a paper, it might get a little bit overwhelming. There's so many things to look at. So if you were going to recommend to someone who's potentially looking to make a change during open season, you start with just a couple of different plans, three or four. Where, where do you really start out of so many uh, options? There's, there's three or four really easy ways to start. One of them, you understand, if you, first place, remember, you have a zip code, okay? You're only going to look at the plans in your zip right. code. So that right away cuts your number of choices down to maybe 25 or 30, depending on just where you, where you live. Um, if you're uh, planning to have a, a baby next year, then you want to check the maternity benefit, which you can do uh, either on the checkbook website or the OPM website. But you really want to look at some brochures. Just flip through a half dozen or a dozen planned brochures and look for the ones. You type in the word maternity. You'll get to a paragraph that says, here's the benefit, and you're going to find four or five of them have zero cost, okay? Pre, post, and during delivery. It's kind of, that's kind of a no-brainer. Another way to start is one we already mentioned. Uh, there's a doctor you want to really have. Maybe it's that doctor uh, for the obstetrician for the baby you're planning to have. What plans have that doctor in their network? So that's another simple way to narrow your choices down real fast. Um, a third way is just to, hey, who's got the lowest premium? Now, you don't want to choose based on premium alone, but you could say to yourself, what plans have a low premium? And then I'll take a look at a couple of them and see how they, how they compare in their, you know, whatever coverage matters to me, uh, the drug coverage or the catastrophic guarantee or that maternity coverage. <laughs> Right. Um, so use something that makes sense for you and your family to narrow your choices. Um, checkbook uh, makes it as easy as we can in one respect. We, since we give you an estimate for each plan as to what you're likely to pay out of pocket plus pr premium, you could start with the least expensive, okay? Mm -hmm. Second least, third least, and so on. So there's a lot of ways to, to skin this cat. Right. And, I mean, there's also a lot of different types of plans. There's the self-plan, family plan, and the, I think, relatively new self plus one plan. Um, in theory, the self plus one would be cheaper than a family plan, but um, is that always the case? Is no, there, it's are not. There cases great, where... great point. Uh, people think a self plus one ought to be cheaper. That's a, insurance is only covering two people. Okay, the family plan is mostly enrolling, you know, two adults and two or three or four children. Well, it turns out that medical expenses go up hugely with age, and most of those self plus one people are empty nesters who are older. Their kids mm -hmm. have grown and left the house. Their average health care expenses are a little higher. The plan's premium has to cover the expenses of the people who enroll in it. So there are roughly 20 plans in which the self plus one premium is actually higher than the family premium. So it's another on your checklist. Be sure, if you're a couple, okay, that the plan you've chosen has a self plus one premium that's lower than the family premium. Pitch, pick whichever one of the two is less expensive because they'll both cover the couple equally well. So it's just, it's automatic savings to pick the one that's less costly. Uh, so that's another factor in final plan choice. Well, um, I think we're almost out of time, but I did want to ask and end on one final question. What is something that, you know, there's a lot of information. We covered just a piece of it, but there's a lot of information out there. 
what's something that you would leave FEHB participants with or what do you want them to come away from this conversation knowing? At the very least, download the plan brochure for the plan you're in. It's a PDF file. You can do it at work. You can do it at home. You don't have to print it. It's going to be 100 pages long. Don't groan. Don't try to read the 100 pages. Turn to that page how the plan changes. Then turn, look up the benefit that you think that matters most to you next year that you know about, like keeping your podiatrist or, or whatever the specialty is that you're, you're going to use the most. And don't forget, that plan might have changed last year, and you didn't read the how the plan changes last year. So there may be something bad hidden there. So look for something either very good or very bad that matters to you. And again, they're all organized. You can, you can use the, a word to search chiropractic, okay, as an example. Uh, you know, maternity, whatever, whatever matters to you, okay, take a look. Um, if you have some particular medical need, drug needs, medicine needs, okay, the plan websites will take you to the plan, for what's called a formulary, their list of drugs and how much that you will have to pay. So if you have any very expensive drugs, that's another way to go in and check. So that's all the time that we have for, di for today. Let me thank my guest. Walt Francis is a federal health policy analyst and author of the annual Guide to Health Plans for Federal Employees and Retirees. I'm Drew Friedman. Now let me send you back to the studio for more of the Open Season Exchange on Federal News Network.